young learners, welcome to Youth Tutors, where we make learning fun and easy. In today's video, we are diving into an exciting math topic, multiplying fractions. Don't worry, multiplying fractions is simpler than it sounds. I'll walk you through it step by step. Grab your notebooks, get comfortable, and let's explore fractions together. In order to know how to multiply fractions, we need to first think about multiplying whole numbers again. So how do multiply fractions? Well, that's the question of today. Um, and we're going to remember how to multiply whole numbers again, which is pretty easy. Um, so basically how we think when we're multiplying whole numbers is that 3 times 2 is basically 3 groups of 2. So we do 2, 2 plus 2 plus 2, which gives us 6. This indicates that it's 3 times 2, which is basically two, uh, 3 groups of 2. So 3 times 2 gives you 6. Well, something is similar like that to fractions as well. So when we learned how to multiply whole numbers, now we're going to learn how to multiply whole numbers by a fraction. So it's not that complicated as it sounds or looks even. It's basically kind of the same thing as we do with the whole numbers, but just a little bit different. So we're going to think like we did three groups of two. We're basically going to think it as of three groups of one eighth. So it's going to be one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth, which gives us three over eight. Basically, this means that it's three times one eighth three groups of one eighth. Now, there is another way you can do this. And the another way is a simpler way, I would say. So our original equation was three times one eighth, and we don't know what it equals. Well, we do, it's three eighth. So another way is basically multiplying the top numerator by the, by the other numerator and the bottom denominator by the de other denominator. So as you can see, it's basically a whole number, so it doesn't have a denominator. But actually, whole numbers do have a denominator, and the denominator is 1. A whole number, if you want to put it into a fraction, you always put the whole number on top, and you put it over 1. Now you do times 1, 8. And then you just multiply across, which gives you 3 over 8. Something to keep in mind when you're multiplying by whole numbers the denominator of the uh, fraction is always going to be that, like the sum, sorry, the product is always going to be that denominator. So make sure of that. How to multiply a fraction by a fraction. This is a little more intense, but kind of the same strategy that we used for whole numbers too. Instead of putting the whole number over one, we don't really need to because we have the fractions. So for this one, we're basically gonna do we're basically gonna multiply them across. Like here in the row, it says whenever multiplying fractions together, you multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators together. Remember this. This is very important to remember when you're multiplying two fractions. So for this one, it's gonna, since it's one half times three over eight, we are basically gonna do it across, multiply them across, which is gonna give us three over 16. Now this doesn't reduce, so it's gonna say three sixteen. So as you guys can see, we have some examples over here. And the first example is one-fifth of ten. So the wording is a little different than usual, what you guys have been seeing. Um, instead of the, uh, the multiplication sign, there is of. So basically what of means, it, it means basically the multiplication sign. So of basically equals multiplication. So yeah, if you see in any of the following examples of, it basically means multiplication so do keep that in mind because i am uh, there are some examples that uses of in it so just keep that in the back of your mind that of basically means multiplication so so one fifth of ten which is basically to reword it it's one fifth times ten so in order to do that as we did a fraction by a whole number we have to put the we have to put the whole number over one so this is going to transform to 1 fifth times 10 over 1. And as we do, we're going to multiply them across, which gives us 10 over 5. 
So as you can see that this is an improper fraction, um, since the numerator is greater than the denominator, um, we're going to see if we can simplify this or if there is a GCF. So for this one, 10 over 5, 10 divided by 5, we know that it equals 2. So um, whenever you have an improper fraction, do try to simplify it or get a whole number out of it if possible. If not, leave it. It's fine. Um, so 10 over 5, it's basically meaning that 10 divided by 5, and as we know that, it equals 2. Okay, so now the next example is 1 sixth of 6. Basically, what I've uh, what we learned before is that of equals multiplication. So basically, this means 1 6 times 6. And we do the same thing here as well, where we put the whole number over 1. So over 1, and then we just multiply it across, which gives us, sorry, which gives us 6 over 6. So as you see that it's 6 over 6, whenever the numerator and the denominator are the same numbers, so if they both are the same numbers, then E equals 1. Do keep that in mind. It's very important. E equals 1. So this is going to equal 1. Okay. Now the next example is 1 third times 2 third. So, or you can say this one third of two third, same thing. Um, this is fraction multiplied by fraction. Um, so in this one, it's nothing different. It's where you're going to just multiply it across and we get our answers. However, the, we also multiply the denominators. Do keep that in mind. So one third times two thirds, we're going to multiply them across the denominators also get multiplied, not like addition and subtraction, where the denominators have to be same, not a multiplication. They don't have to be the same. So this is going to equal 2 over 9. And this can be simplified further, so it's going to stay like that. Okay, now, number 4, um, the example is 5, five over 6 times 1 over 6, or 5 6 uh, of 1 6, same thing. So here as well, we're going to just multiply them normally across like 5, 6 times 1 over 6, which basically gives us 5 over 36. The next example is 4 fifths times 2 thirds. As we did normally, we are going to do the same thing for this one too. 4, 5 times 2 over 3, which gives you 8 over 15. Now the next example is 3 4 times 1 half. Same thing again. They're both their fractions. You just multiply them across, which is 3 4 times 1 half, which gives you 3 over 8. Okay, number 7. So for this specific example, I want you guys to really, really pay attention and put this down in your notebooks too because this uh, there's going to be an um, additional step to it. Um, you don't usually do this, but if you're multiplying fractions and they do have a number in common, you have to do that additional step, which I'll explain it, um, in this example. So we started off normal one fourth times two over three, which equals two over 12. So as you can see, like two over 12, there is a number which is in common, which is two. So two is the common number. If you know that there's a common number, you basically divide both. Hold on, let me write it in a different color so you can see more easily. We divide both of them by 2. Something to keep in mind while doing this is basically whatever you do to the top, you have to do it to the bottom. Just keep that in mind. Whatever you do to the top, you have to do it to the bottom. It's just a rule of math and you have to follow that rule. Um, not in just this, but in many other subjects sorry, many other topics ex uh, as well. So when you divide 2 by 2, it gives you 1. And 12 divided by 2 gives you 6. So basically, 2, 12 equals 1, 6. It's the same thing. So when you divide it by 2, it gave you a simplified version of it. And um, if you want that version back, just to make sure that you got the answer right, you can do that. There is a way you can do that. And... We'll do it right now. 
So one sixth, right? When you multiply by two, if you multiply both both of them by two, it is gonna give you two over twelve. So it's basically the same thing, but it's just a more simplified version. And we need to simplify the fractions, so we have less numbers to really work with. Okay, next example is three sixth times four seventh. So for this one, we're basically going to do same thing, um, 3 6 times 4 over 7, which gives you 12 over 42. So this is also similar to number 7, where there is a number in common, and that number is 6. 6 is in common with these two numbers, um, because 6 is divisible by 12, and 6 is also divisible by 42. Usually, it's very recognizable if um, there is a number in common if uh, because of multiplications. Um, so we know that there is a number in common. So 12 over 42, we divide both. Hold on. Let me write that in different color too. Divide that by 6. And that equals 2 over 7. Same thing that 12 over 42 equals 2 over 7. They both are the same thing. Okay, so the next example is 7 8 times 4 or 6. We do the same thing as we did for the other fractions where it's 7 8 times 4 over 6. And we do 7 times 4, 8 times 6, which gives us 28 over 48. As you guys can see that there is something common in between of this fraction and that number in order to find that number we have to find gcf so basically gcf is that number that is common between those two number um gcf gcf stands for greatest common factor which is basically the number that is between um that is common between those two the greatest number that is be common between those two and for this one it is four four is divisible by 28 and also is divisible by 48. So when you divide 28 over 48 divided by 4, it equals, it gives you 7 over 12. Since 4 times 7 and 4 times 12 gives you 28 over 48. Okay, so the next example is 8 times 16 times 4 over 12. So also pay attention to this equation a little bit. Um, I know there's a lot of simplifying in this whole um, video, but it is very important. There is going to be another video in the future where it explains simplifying very thoroughly. But for perhaps for this video, it's going to be a very slight introduction to it, I guess. So for this equation, um, that is this is very factorable. And um, so we're going to 8 over 16... The common number between this is 8. So it's going to 8, if we do 8 over 16, divide both sides by 8, it gives us 1 over, sorry, 1 over 2, basically 1 half. And this is also divisible, so 4 over 12 is divisible by 4. So whatever we do to the top, we have to do it to the bottom. So this is going to equal one third. Okay. So in this blank space, I'm going to work it out. So the question was 8 over 6 times 4 over 12, which we realized that it also equals, basically um, the factor form is 1 half times 1 third, which is very easy numbers to work with instead of these big numbers. So for this one, we just multiply them across. Let me do it in a different color so you can see it easily. We just multiply across, which gives us 1 sixth. Okay, so now the next example is 2 ninths of 4. Multiplying whole numbers again. Okay, <laughs> 2 ninth times 4 over 1. Remember that of means multiplication. Do you remember that? Um, 2 times 4 gives us 8. 9 times 1 gives us 9. Okay, the last example for the day is 4 times 12 of 3. Again, of. <laughs> so 
So of is basically multiplication. Remember that, that this means multiplication. So 4 over 1 times 3 over 1. Sorry, my bad. It's 12. 4 over 12 times 3 over 1, which gives us 12 over 12, which also gives us 1. Okay, something that I forgot to explain that 4 over 12 is also factorable. And this is going to give you 4 over 12 divided by 4 on both sides. It's going to, I mean, sorry, on whatever you do to the top, you have to do it to the bottom. So 4 divided by 4, 1 and 12 divided by 4, it is 3. So if you do it this way, 3 or 1 third times 3 over 1 equals 3 over 3, which also gives you 1. Some things to keep in mind while multiplying fractions is that multiplying a fraction by a whole number, you have to multiply the numerator, the top number of the fraction by a whole number, while keeping the denominator, both numbers, the same. Simplify the results if necessary. Additionally, do multiply two fractions to multiply two fractions. Multiply the numerators together and the denominators together, and then simplify the results if possible or needed. Um, well, that was all for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to Youth Tutors and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release another new educational video. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or if there is a specific topic you'd like us, like us to cover in a future video. Bye-bye!